All right. For our last few minutes, I'm going to ask Jerry Fint to come up here and just speak for a couple of minutes on things he's working on as it regards the OTA. <laughs> Jerry, give us uh, not more than three minutes, if you could. We'll save the better part for another day. I can't talk that short. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jerry Fint, and I'm an attorney. Uh, still doing part-time work for the city of Oklahoma City uh, in the intimate domain. Uh, how I got involved in the Turnpike Authority uh, dispute is five or six people called me because they'd heard that I was an expert in intimate domain. I tried intimate domain cases for over 35 years with the city of Oklahoma City and still trying them right now is why they retained me after I retired. But I told the uh, people that called me and that tried to hire me that uh, I'm 82 and I've tried those cases and they're a lot of work and you've got to really get after it if you want to get, represent the landowner uh, really honestly and with vigor. And I told them that I just did not want any more in my domain cases from what I'm getting from the city right now. So I uh, turned those people down and told them they could find some other l attorneys that uh, do that work and are still doing it in Oklahoma City area. Uh, a gentleman kept calling me and asking me to get involved and he didn't really say why, uh, and, and he represented himself as one of the protest leaders there in Oklahoma County, eastern Oklahoma County. And I kept turning him down, and after about the third or fourth time he called me, uh, he really sounded nice. And I said, well, you know, I, I've told people I, I don't want to try their intimate domain case, but uh, I have expertise in the bond issues, and the Turnpike Authority will need a bond issue for that project that they're proposing for eastern Oklahoma County and western Oklahoma County. And I said, I will review the law and attack it on some basis, but I only attack the statutes and sue the state on constitutional issues because that is the supreme law in Oklahoma. If you're just attacking a statute because of another statute, you're really in trouble. But if you use the Constitution as your axe, then you have a, a really a basic uh, foundation against the statute. And I, I always like to say this. In 1907, the people got together in Oklahoma and said, we need a government. And we're going to consent to have a government. But when we consent to be governed by a government, we will have clauses in the Constitution that protect us. And Oklahoma's Constitution is one of the best state constitutions in the Union. It has 10 or 12 provisions that say the state shall not do this, log rolling. The state shall not do this, perpetuities or monopolies and other things that restricted our government. We consented to have a government, but we wanted protection also from that government, and those provisions give us that protection. I always use that in my cases as an advantage. If we don't like this government, we should dissolve it and start again. And that's what uh, they come in here with votes from people that were going to, in November, that try to change the Constitution, and, and usually you're giving up some rights. But this gentleman called me, and he, he was very intelligent for a layman. He was not an attorney. And he said, well, Jerry, you said you'd help us with a, with a lawsuit. Uh, and I, I looked at one of these, in Title 69, 1705F is kind of a funny statute that the, they're working off of as authority. And I said, well, okay, I, I'll write it down. And I didn't do anything. He called me back in two or three weeks and said, uh, well, have you looked at 1705F? And I said, no, I haven't. And he said, oh, come on. So I hung up and I looked at that. And dad gum, that was the statute that authorizes uh, turnpikes in Oklahoma County and Tulsa County and Ada and Arkansas. So I found there was four locations for a turnpike in one statute. Two of them were urban and two of them were rural. Oklahoma Constitution log rolling. Oklahoma Constitution says you shall have only one subject matter in a statute. They had four subject matters. Two turnpikes in cities and two in rural areas. And I filed that lawsuit against the Turnpike Authority and beat them to the courthouse. 
They didn't like that, of course. <laughs> My attack on the first lawsuit was just attacking the statute being in violation of Oklahoma's constitution on log rolling. Then about a week later, they filed their bond issue case, and I, I answered that with also uh, log rolling. They had the same, because they cannot build a turnpike in Oklahoma County unless they say that's a legal statute, the one that has four uh, subject matters to it. So, and then the second lawsuit was filed against me. I, wait, I've got to find something else. Now, we know that Oklahoma City, the Tulsa Turnpike, was built a long time ago in the latter 50s or six, early 60s. And then all through the history of turnpikes, they used that turnpike payment to pay off the debts of small turnpikes that cannot pay for themselves. You know that. There are numerous turnpikes that are not long enough or large enough to pay for the debt of building it. So what they do, they take that debt and they spread it on all the turnpikes that are completed and finished, and that's usually Oklahoma City to Tulsa, Tulsa to Missouri, and Oklahoma City to Lawton. We pay, riding on that, we pay the debt of another turnpike that, that we don't even ride on. So there must be something against that. And that was the first time I thought about that. I've got to find something. In Oklahoma Constitution, Article 2, Section 4, the state shall not have perpetuities or monopolies. Wow! Boy, that fits it. Because perpetuities, they have a debt on Oklahoma City to Tulsa Turnpike since 1960 uh, when they built it. And it's continuing a debt, a debt, a debt, a debt, a debt. You know, you buy a house and get a mortgage, a debt on your house, it's over with in 25 years. The turnpikes, the debt is never over with. It violates perpetuities to infinity. It continues. It's a clear violation of the Oklahoma Constitution. So now I'm looking up the law of cases. Gosh, is there a case that supports my argument? And sure, there was a case. Did you know there was a bridge across the Canadian River, South Canadian River, from Cleveland County to McLean, McLean County in 1911 it was built? It was a toll bridge. And that for 20 years they had a toll bridge and you had to pay to go across that bridge on the South Canadian River. Well, there was an out-of-state guy driving through Oklahoma and he wanted to go that way and he went there and... They asked him they got to pay a toll to get across this bridge in Oklahoma. He protested. He said, no, you can't do that. So he got a local lawyer, and they sued the, the, the state of They sued the county who ran, helped run the bridge in the western district of the federal courts in Oklahoma. He could do that because of diversity of citizenship. An out-of-stater who's screwed around or messed around by the state of Oklahoma can go to federal court because it's called diversity of citizenship. And he took that case to the Western District of Federal Court. And that judge came out with a decision and said after 20 years that toll bridge was a free bridge. <laughs> a federal judge said that in 1931. Uh, that bridge had been built for 20 years, 1911 to 1931. Well, the, the county and the operator of that toll bridge appealed that case to the Tenth Circuit in, in Colorado. And the Tenth Circuit sometimes has political federal judges. They reversed the case and said, no, no, this, this guy can keep having that toll bridge for infinity, He'll keep, keep having it. And the issue was, my issue, Article 2, Section 4, Oklahoma Constitution, about perpetuities and monopolies. Well, this out-of-state operator, he got a lawyer and he appealed that case to the U.S. Supreme Court in 1934. <laughs> the U.S. Supreme Court came out with a decision and overturned the Tenth Circuit, affirming the local Western District that that was illegal and unconstitutional under Oklahoma Constitution of perpetuities and monopolies. And so I have that case in the second oh, turnpike case 
that our Oklahoma Supreme Court is deciding. But I have a real a history of Oklahoma Supreme Court. I've been up there numerous times. I've uh, argued in bank before all nine judges, more than any four attorneys together in the state of Oklahoma through my career. But, and I know there's bad news I'm going to tell you. The bad news is our Oklahoma Supreme Court doesn't have any guts. They are bought and sold by the legislature. They are afraid of appropriations being cut, and they will if you have a big case, good authority, you have a very good chance of losing because their theory is to protect the state of Oklahoma. We need to change the way we appoint Oklahoma Supreme Court judges. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jerry. And on that note, vote no against the Oklahoma Supreme Court judges in a couple of weeks. And Jerry, we hope that you continue doing battle with them to infinity and beyond. We'll see you all next week.